Agile Lounger, Agile Lover, those who would like to change the world of work and the world of business with more business agility, welcome once again to this special edition of Their Real Agile on your podcast. For those who run with me once a month on Friday, here we have the second part of our great conversation with Michael Orman, a fellow member of the Enterprise Scrum for Business Agility. And in this episode, uh, we're going to talk about the open space fluidity and simplicity into business agility, how the open space and simplify everything from role to artifact to ceremony could be engaging and inviting for real business agility because at their real agile we'd like to talk all things business agility first and foremost and this is today the uh, episode two of our great conversation with michael Herman on the series of agile insider because yes we are agile insiders so sit back relax for those on the podcast run with us again don't forget if you're a new a listener or a new watcher on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to the devices or the platform of your choice from Spotify to Apple Music to Deezer to SoundCloud. You have the choice because Agile Lounge and Daryl Agile is everywhere. So don't forget to subscribe, get notified and be on our value list for a lot more exciting stuff about business agility, freedom lifestyles and digital nomad life. So. Enjoy this 20 minutes, part two of our conversation with Michael Lerman. Cheers and have a nice weekend. But uh, yeah, so I've been introduced to it and other people always think like I'm an IT guy. I'm not an IT guy. I'm, uh, I'm just like an organizer, a well public relation guy and uh, and I like to facilitate and help people. I'm a coach also. I was coach in sports and, and bicycle team. So, you know, nowadays you said the Scrum Master. What is a Scrum Master? You should be a master of Scrum. So it means like back in 2002, that was wrong to for me to have the title of Scrum Master because I was learning it with the guy. No. Uh, so how do you, so I was a team coach. If we simplify the language, I was a team coach. Right. And then the coach Agile is the same thing. How much of you are in the mindset of Agile to proclaim yourself an Agile coach? So that's uh, another question too. Well, this you uh... it's, you know, there, there's, uh, when we talk in, in open space, and well, let me mention one, other, one thing before I go there. Um, when, when Mike brought out Enterprise Scrum. It was a couple of years after uh, he, he and I had done my Scrum training. You know, he, he had he had knighted me as a Scrum master, and uh, he invited me to come to the the training. And so he he taught us for for he taught two classes that week. I went to both of them: the software scaling and the and the business agility. And somewhere along the way, he and I got to talking about because uh, I, I was curious and he, he was very interested in open space and he he didn't see any division, any any line between open space and enterprise scrum. And that was what I thought was so cool. So he uh, uh, we had this this conversation uh, a couple of times and it never resolved and it didn't have to. It, 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 the answer doesn't matter. The, the question itself is the fun part, right? Because yeah. what I asked him, and again, not really looking for an answer, um, but I said, I'm trying to figure out, it just in my own mind, is Enterprise Scrum one big open space with 9, 10, 12 boxes on the wall to just organize it? Or is it 9, 10, 12 individual open spaces? where we deal with all the issues and opportunities for resources and all the issues and opportunities for customer and for leadership and, you know, these other parts. So um, the, the fun thing is that we never decided, but we agreed that it was open space, that 
because Mike used to say, um, well, he was in one of the classes. I went to, I don't know, about 10 classes, I think, that he taught in Chicago. Every time he taught in Chicago, he'd have me come back and I'd help teach a little and I'd learn more stuff from him. And um, he, one of the early times he was, he used to give us the, the exercise and then leave, which is just what we do in open space. We say, okay, here's the markers, here's the paper. We all go, it all goes up on the wall. And then when we send people to the wall to figure out what they're gonna do, which breakout sessions are gonna go, the book says, go take a nap, leave, let them work it out, right? So Mike used to do that very <laughs> naturally and he'd leave. And so he left us for 20 minutes and we were supposed to put stuff up on a canvas. And there are a bunch of us in the room and we're all puzzling and he's, he's told us all kinds of stuff and we're all kind of making it complicated. And um, he comes back and he looks at the wall and there's not a single sticky on the canvas. And oh, yes. we're all talking and there's sort of people are playing with the things and he's like, he picks up the paper that he'd given us the, the, uh, the canvas, uh, you know, was all on the, you know, papers as well. And he's like, guys, guys, it's just a canvas. <laughs> Don't make it so complicated. And in these iterations with Mike and watching people learn this stuff, I, I distilled open space and scrum and Kanban and, and then enterprise scrum all into the same model, the, the slightly bigger version of this, put it all up on the wall and then get it done. Yeah. And it's that um, there's a, uh, what Mike used to say is the canvas was for visualizing everything. Yeah. And when, uh, when you put everything up on the wall, like we've done, so, you know, I'd, I'd seen many, many times in open space, I've seen in enterprise scrum since, um, that to me, when we talk in open space, that when we say, okay, here's the story, here's what we're here for, now here's the markers and the paper, and there's the empty wall. That's the, the sacred moment, Harrison Owen calls it, that, you know, when nobody knows what's gonna happen. The whole next thing, the whole way we're gonna be is born out of that void, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, and he studied, Harrison studied, you know, biblical stories and stuff. I mean, if he didn't, you know, whatever, ancient Greek and all that. And so he came at it from a spirit standpoint, but it's really true. And before you put anything on the wall, anything can happen. And as soon as you start naming things, you are creating the future. You are creating your world. And, you know, you can do that with a regular scrum backlog or, you know, whatever. That, that, is, but, very, that is very power, powerful, Mike. My, my, so my... that's the key moment. Yeah. Once you get everything on the wall, I go back to my own experience with personal Kanban. The first time I did this visualization for myself, I did it in my living room, sitting in front of the fireplace with a whiteboard leaned up. And I, I put up everything I could think of doing in my life. Everything I thought I had to do. I and mean, it was not bucket list stuff. I mean, it's just like the stuff that I was working on. And it was simultaneously um, a relief and a horror, uh, you know, or whatever. It was, it was overwhelming and I didn't need to carry it around anymore. But so there's this, oh shit moment of what do I do with this? Right? You have a whole ship moment and I have fuck up moment. <laughs> yeah. That's so kind of as soon as the stuff goes up on the wall, though, the rest is completely natural. Yeah. Oh, shit. What do I do with this? Yeah. Well, do these like go it? together. This yeah. goes together. Okay. What do I do? What, this is most important. This can't happen yet. We sort it out. We prioritize. And where there are big things, we break them into small things. All this happens naturally. Then now, I, was I was going to find the. You. I was yeah. going to ask you because when you said like, uh, because for me every year, okay, when I start my new year for my mini companies, I'm actually doing like an open space. So I call it a vision board in my case, because I'd like to see what is my mind, my mind and my heart as well. Mm -hmm. So I put it on a big wall of paper with circles and I create a kind of a galaxy of it. But sometimes hmm, I cut myself doing the reverse splitting of probably an idea. 
I clustered them <laughs> together instead. So this is, this is not good. I said like, okay, if I cluster them with them, so probably I have to prioritize a couple of those ideas into more specific action. So so when you said like I have to split yeah. it uh, into a shorter feasible thing to digest yeah. along the way, depending on the cycle you made. I mean, and, and it's a process of, you say, well, if I'm going to clean up this board, that thing either has to get done or it has to get tossed, Yeah. right? And if I'm not going to toss it and I can't do it as it is, then I have to break it down. So we can write books about refinement, <laughs> but it's a natural thing, right? Yes. And then if I find the things that are most important and I move them over to one side, I don't care which, or the top or whatever, now I know what I have to do tomorrow and I can ignore the rest. So and this, is so this right. happens. So then I commit to those things, then I can actually get them done. And then the last piece of this story is that when, when we were kids and we played football in the front yard of the, the neighbor kid's yard, because it was perfect rectangle, after every play, we went back and the huddle was, how come you didn't hit me? Well, I didn't see you. Yeah, but I was doing this. And that's a retrospective, right? Kids do, like everybody does, you know, the, 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 the tower of blocks falls down and the kids, first they cry and then they're like, why? What happened? Well, let's try it again. And they, they, they're trying it different and trying to do it better. And yeah. so retrospective, the, the, the prioritization and the, the, all that uh, you know, refining and, and committing and delivering and ret what Mike called, I, I love, when he went away from retrospective and called it review and improve because it gave it purpose. It gave it forward focus. Um, when uh, those things are all natural phenomena, as long as you can get over the hump of putting everything you know on the wall and by, you know, corollary or whatever, uh, everything you don't know. And because that was the horror part of looking at the, the um, board when I first did it was, oh, first it was, oh my God, that's a lot to do. And then I stood back and said, wait, is that all I am? That's all I'm about is what's my whole life's work. Everything that I think I could be and do is on this one little. Now they were very small stickies, but it was not a huge whiteboard either. And it was like, Oh my God, that's my life. That's the whole thing. So um, anyway, that's, that's the, the danger of putting all this stuff on the wall. Yes and no. It's not a danger, but actually well, life is dangerous. It's an experiment. It feels that way. Though. I, like it. I like it, Mike, that you brought it up because I, I, I don't think there's there's not enough of us. And if we are a community of agile or business agilists, a lot of people, as you said, like they talk about literature, they talk about uh, Harvard Business Review uh, type of thing. And I said, like, all of a sudden, like, since when the lean and agile people are complicating things with intellectual type of stuff as actually we should go with the flow of experimenting empirism like the kids we were playing football as you mentioned i like that example and because then that's it's it's for any game actually i remember like uh so as i i mean that this is like so in your face in nature and we have the tendency of being those uh, smart monkeys I don't know if you remember the, the great botanist Terence McKenna. I don't uh, want to. I know the name. I don't. He, 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 so so for him, he was a botanist and he worked for big pharma to to find plants in the South America. But at some point, he by meeting a lot of people, by meeting other ideas and and reevaluating the the conception of our northern and western civilization of he he he, he worded one of his first book out of the botanic. <laughs> Was actually the monkey who think who thinks, something like that. So so then he went about the the psychedelic monkeys and so, and so on and so on. So so that was like kind of that was like crazy, the shit at the fan moment for him, saying like we are in academia, even business school, complicating thing, that are in our face and we just have to flow with it. 
And we often talk in Kanban or some other kind of buzzword for of the Well, and we do it to ourselves. It's not yeah. just the guys who are inventing the things and studying the things. As consumers of learning, we we want to go right to the mastery. We don't want to, I think what, what we need to understand, um, I like the word in, in, in the coding community, the craftsmanship mm. term was really, I think, right on. We don't understand practice. Um, having, having been introduced to some uh, you know, Tibetan guys and, and um, learn some things about meditation and all. And, uh, and uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, they have lineage is the other thing we don't, you know, I learned scrum and enterprise scrum from Mike Beadle who helped invent it. You know, I mean, there, there's like, there, but he would say he learned scrum from Jeff. Yeah. He started out, he started out all his class, you know, his enterprise scrum class said, look, I took and made this from what I got from Jeff and Ken. That's, you know, so he introduced lineage there. And we, we want to go straight to the, the mastery. So we, we say, give me, tell me everything you know. And you say, oh, my God, I've been doing this for, you know, 10, 15, 5, 20 years, whatever. Long time. Anyway, many times. So oh, what I've learned. Whereas, you know, and Mike, I mean, I, I was pushing on him a bit about this because he had come up with 22 canvases. I think at last count, and I I thought it was thirty five. But said earlier, yeah. what's that? I thought it was thirty five at some point. I don't know. It was it was many. It was more than I could count. Yes, right? I remember last time I met with him in New York, uh, twenty eighteen. Actually, just prior to him uh, departure. Yeah, he was asking me about um, uh, with the, that girl also from Moscow, Marina Alex, who did the yeah. sway stuff. You know, so he said like, oh, so. So we might do a canvas on customer experience like Alex Alm is kind of doing. And, and we're talking about the human resources for Agile. That was just prior to the Business Agility Summit. Oh, yeah. And so I think he created on the spot there in New York, three more canvases, one for oh, HR and they, they happen. So, yeah. And they, th there was compliance and marketing yeah. and sales and everything. But I said yeah, but to him, Mike... Because don't laugh, this is uh, his way of managing perception. It was great. This is what I learned from him when we are entering a meeting with VPs and so on. Like he said, like, shut up and listen. And you'll see, I will take that canvases. I will change the name just to appeal to that guy. Yeah. So at some point, like maybe yeah, that was the, but that was important because, you know, the compliance you're talking about, that's helping me and save my butts and save my clients' butts in the financial institution so much yeah. because when they no, see it, like yes, but we just have that he had so many of them, right? I know, but actually, it's not. It's not like a box tool of things. Like if you well, need the well, this, this is this is what I this is what I was trying to tell him when I first heard. You know, when I first encountered this, is I don't think because I came from outward bound and experiential education, right? <laughs> we used to take people into the woods and on the first night they would pull out tents. We hadn't practiced, you know, it's going to get dark. They need a place to sleep. Yeah. They're going to figure it out. If they don't figure out tonight, they're going to be there tomorrow faster. So they have more daylight to figure out how the heck these things go together. Right. But they need to learn for themselves. We'll learn to, to do fire first. And then yeah. something that so, you ask me. So I told him, Mike, I, I'm really, I'm concerned that, that you take some of the experience, some of the learning experience away from, from folks. They need to, that they don't understand their canvas. So I couldn't, I mean, I could understand all these canvases, but I couldn't, um, when, when he died, and I tried to represent what I'd learned from him and what he was teaching in these classes, um, I couldn't explain 20 or 30 canvases. So I distilled them all. And most of them collapsed into one form, one basic form. And there were three centers, three primary value lists that I call the day job, the stuff we get paid for. And then all the other boxes around it are all the different things that we have to do in order to do that work. And 
that's, you can tweak the labels, um, the leadership, you know, there, there's a box out on the, the far left of the canvas. I think the original business model canvas called it suppliers. Mm -hmm. It's basically the, the inputs you got to work with. It's the boundaries, right? But I've called it alternatively context, leadership, um, governance, funding. When I was teaching it, uh, I, I taught enterprise scrum to single software teams in, uh, in a financial business. And for them, it was regulatory was part of that. It's all the boundaries that get put on our work that we have to work within. So you can tweak the names, but the basic shape of the thing is the same. And there's a, in my view, there's a, there's a, uh, an environment frame that is that leadership context governance piece, purpose, customer, and metrics. That's all what it looks like on the outside. Yeah. Then there's a frame that's the inside, the system. It's our resources that we can tap, it's team practices, it's the roles, the, the scrum board itself that we need to maintain, stakeholders, channels. That's all the stuff that we need inside our system to do the work. And that distinction between environment and system is something I learned from Emory and Trist, the guys who did the self-organizing stuff and described those environments, the turbulent and all that. That's their language coming oh. in socio-technical systems in the 1950s or something. That old? Really? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was... Right. And the interesting thing is the, the socio-technical systems and the Emory and Trist work, when they went into the coal mines, incidentally, they went in because they had brought all this automation into the mines and they had destroyed the teams that had gone in together and kept each other alive. Now every man went in individually and they were trying to overcome and rebuild the the teams that kept people sane and safe in the mines. So um, it was very much a, a people first, you know, let's, let's look out for these guys who are going and dig, dig in the coal. Um, so anyway, I simplified Mike's canvases to one that mm -hmm. has three different ways to, to plug in. And one of them is the, the, the portfolio version of his canvases. And the other is the uh, scaling with the columns. And uh, then there's sort of a blank and you can make up your own, but those are my three. And then just the other day, uh, a few weeks ago, somebody, a group I was working with, they said, oh no, the canvas is too complicated and I'm, people are gonna be confused. And I said, oh, you know, people are really thinking it's not that confusing, right? It's not. But, so I simplified it to this. I don't know if we. So this I is only two of those on YouTube and Facebook because this those is two boxes. Yeah, yeah two I simplified, you know, about a dozen, uh, you know, business model canvas inspired panels what to these mean? two. Yeah. Okay. Everything we need to do and all the reason we can't. Why we can't. Because so, everything is possible, right? No. Well, well yeah. No. yeah. Yes, we know that, but they don't know it yet. Okay. So we say, look, tell me all the stuff you got to do. And then, well, why don't you just go do it? Well, because this depends on that, and we're waiting for this. No, that's and the thing. So that's all the obstacles. Yeah, but right? that, exactly. So you actually list up front. Well, what are, goals, even sure. before practicing the cycle of performing. Because it's what they know, right? Really? It's, and with that, uh, see, because what are resources? What, um, resources in the canvas are those things, people and tools and things that we don't have in the team that we have access to. We can call in this specialist or we yeah. can, you know, use these things. Those things are usually... Uh, when teams bring an obstacle to say, well, we don't know how to do this. And they say, well, where are you going to find it? So we'll get you a resource. Okay. Well, so a lot of those systems, a lot, a lot of the stuff that's wrapped around the PVL yeah. is the stuff that we got to do to overcome the, the obstacles anyway. So they're already talking in that language. But, but for me, you know, the, 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 the means, like we talk about business model canvases, like uh, I could see, I could 
I will play the devil advocates a little bit here. Like there was a, like, I could hear people like, I don't know about the seven, 10 people who are watching right now, but are we oversimplifying things? Because for me, what I do is, of course, I found that creating a canvases with a label on it for anything of aspect. Oh, the, the, I, a, generic, a generic one, hold on, a generic one. And then you probably draw or created boxes needed for a specific context. This is my signature pattern. Like the same thing with the Jeff Shutterland Scrum Inc. Uh, kind of uh, building team canvases, you know, to, to create a, a team working agreement. I like to use it because more often when you introduce people to Scrum and agility, they, they don't want to go into a blank pages. So, but I tell them, okay, you see, this is a model for you to have your structure of your team with uh, the ceremony you choose. The, but actually, if you want to remove a box from that canvases, be my guest. If you'd like to add the box, be my guest. This is fully configurable. Uh, configu I don't know. Yeah, configurable. <laughs> configurable thank you and i just want to mention that we have a couple of europeans making likes on facebook michael and excellent you know, we have barbara michur she was there i don't know barbara if you're still there say hello to us because i see your art you just make us a like so i'm glad you you make it so barbara she was listening to us at some point